Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Python tutorial. In this one, we're going to be doing the merge sort. So we've moved on from bubble sort to merge sort. And the reason why you would even consider using different sorting algorithms is that some are more efficient than others in certain places. And I will make a video, maybe the next Python video, on O notation. I'm not going to cover it in this video, which is on the Wikipedia page if you go down to find it here. And it's basically a way of representing how efficient an algorithm is depending on how much data it takes in. So for example if you had like millions of data, pieces of data, the merge sort would do it much faster than the bubble sort. But with less data the bubble sort would probably win. So it all depends on that and you can work out by using the formula but I'll do that in a separate video. So in this video we're going to be implementing merge sort in Python and here's a good representation of it. Now it'd be nice if I could reset this like gif but um, basically how it works is you have your uh, whole list of data, it's going to reset now, uh, and it's all jumbled up because obviously you're meant to be sorting it, and then um, what it does is it takes this list of characters and it splits it, so now you've got two small lists and then you've got four small smaller lists, and then now you've got like uh, single characters basically all split up, and what it does is it takes the first two and then it sorts those two, so obviously five is small and six, so it goes five and six, then it takes the next, well one then three, and so on. You do it for all of the things that you've split up. So they're all sorted between themselves. Um, and then after that, you then stick, which is, well, you merge them together. So you merge the first list with the second list by saying, well, this character's bigger than the first one, and then this character's bigger than five. Then it goes five, and then six is left. So here it checks the first characters of both lists. So it's, well, two small lists, we'll pull that first. Then it, then it now has to check the four. Well, four's still smaller. Then seven, then eight. And it does the exact same thing with the last two lists. So, well, out of the first two characters, one is smaller. Then out of these two, two. Then out of these, three. Then out of these, four. Then out of these, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. So basically, you split everything up, and then you do loads of little checks until everything is sorted. So you kind of manage uh, it in different... Like, if you look down at this uh, visual diagram, it splits data into different... Um, kind of well it looks like lines so like you slowly put them into different lines which is the same as splitting them up in here and then slowly grouping them together and then eventually you group up two bigger ones into one big big one obviously the more data you've got the more cuts and merges you'll have to do but anyway let's get into it so what do we need to do well as always we'll start off with some numbers and i'm just gonna like going rather than sitting here typing out numbers actually i'll add some more because i want to show how like um we can add uh, more like values. Uh, that should be good enough. Oh, we've got loads of values now. Okay, and then we want to make a function for the sort. Now, obviously, I will give you the option of pausing and trying to do it yourself uh, if you want. So I'm going to call it obviously merge sort, and it's going to take in the numbers array. Uh, and here it is. And then down here, I'm going to run the thing. Now, the difference in this one than how I think I did one of the other videos is you can either print the sorted array, uh, print the sorted list, or you can actually sort the list. Because I could print what it looks like sorted, but that might not actually change the position of numbers. Where this actually does take in the, the array and change it. I think I did that for the other ones, but in case I didn't, then, you know. So after we've sorted it, then we want to print it. Now let's actually make the algorithm. So, the first thing we need to do is... Um, so when I like looked up different people's ways of doing it, they tend to do prints because it's very it's a very good way of showing uh, what's going on at that time. So what we can do is we can start off by print, uh, and then we can say we are splitting, um, and then whatever we're splitting. So we're splitting, well, the list numbers. Uh, though numbers is going to keep getting cut down. Um, so you'll you'll see this in a second. And then after we have uh, printed splitting numbers, that doesn't actually do anything. We want to say, well, if the length of numbers is greater than 1. The reason we do this is that it's going to keep splitting it until the uh, array gets down to the size of 1. Because obviously once it's, like what it does is it takes our list of big values and splits it half, then like splits it half again, and splits it half again. But we want it to stop when it gets to 1 because it can't really do anything for 1. So this this means that, you know, it only does it if there's a more than one character. Because you can't split one character, really. 
then what we need is we need three variables. We need a middle, a left, and a right. So we need the middle is the length of uh, the list divided by two, but make sure you use the double division, the integer division, or div, because that means if we did it normally and it was a, an even list, the halfway point would actually be an odd number, and the reason why it's odd in an even list is because um, 0, 1, 2, 3. If there's four values, it's actually 0, 1, 2, 3. Though, if we use len numbers, actually, the list would, it would be position 2. No, it would be fine for even, sorry. But for odd, uh, this stops it giving us a, an integer. I mean, it makes us have an integer. And the reason why this is important is because in lists you can't have decimals you can't say like position 2.5 index 2.5 that won't work you need it to be a whole number um, then we say left is equal to numbers and then this is a bit different from before so let's say we said uh, left is equal to numbers middle that would give us uh, left is equal to the middle value but we want this to be all the values left of the middle so we can actually put a colon before middle and it means that so we've got this index middle which will be like whatever the middle value is I'm guessing it's around here 55 maybe we want all the values left of that. And then if we do um, right is numbers middle with a colon afterwards, it means we want all the values the right of the middle. So we split it up properly. Um, and then under this, we need to use recursion. And what recursion is, uh, recursion is where a function calls itself to do something. And this is useful in some cases. And obviously here, we're going to have to use it. So we can then call merge sort from inside merge sort and we're going to sort left and we're going to sort right now the reason we do this is because um, oops can't type so we're going to split the list so we split the whole thing into the half so we get left half and then left is going to get uh, merge sorted again so it runs this thing and it splits it and splits it so basically, these two functions are going to make sure that our list gets completely split up into individual values. This will keep doing it until we've got every value split up. And then obviously, this isn't going to get ran afterwards because once the length is uh, 1, um, it's going to stop because it's not greater than 1. And we also then need um, values uh, to loop. So we could do for loops, but for this, we're going to use whiles. And since in for loops you declare a variable and whiles you don't we're going to declare them before and so we're going to say i j k equals zero and we're going to inc increment them as we loop so we want to say while i is less than the length of left so if you if you imagine that we've got all the values on the left of our array um and i is going to be zero and the length is going to be one so that means this will get run once when we've got one value and it's going to we're also going to need to do a uh, while well, j is less than the length of right we're going to use i to talk about the left and j to talk about the right um so basically we're saying whilst we have at least one thing on either side of our split so like once we've split it up the first check we do is like these two values so this will be uh left i and this will be right j because they're going to be left zero and right zero um, it says like well these are in this range we want to say uh, if left i is less than right j so if this value is less than this value then we do this we say numbers k which is zero the first uh, this is going to be like our new kind of list where we append stuff to um, we're still using numbers as the list because we're going to output numbers as well um, we want to set this equal to left i so that as it says if the left value is smaller than the right then we're going to set the first one to the i which means that yeah so if this is smaller than this if 54 is smaller than 26 then 54 is the value you want obviously it isn't so that's not going to be the case um, and then after we've done that we want to increment i because that means then we can check the next one. So that later on when we have like, we're checking four against four maybe, um, if this first value gets used, we want to increment i, so we then check the next value. So like, I've closed the thing now, but you remember what I mean, like, when it's used the first value of a part of the merge sort, it then moves on to the next value and checks that one instead. And this is what lets us increment to check. Um, 
Then we also want to say um, else. So obviously, if it isn't. So we can put like, I can put else if, but you know, else. Um, so, well, I'll put, yeah, I'll do else. Uh, else numbers k is equal to right j. So basically, if this one's bigger than this one, then uh, the numbers k, so number zero, is going to be um, the left one. Whereas if it's um, not, so else, then it does the right one. So in this case, the else is going to get ran, and we're going to set the value equal to the right one. Because, yeah, and then we, um, but then the problem is we can't run this anymore because there's no values on the right once we've put, once we've taken the value from the right, there are no, there's none left. So what we need to do is we also need to increment k at the end of this. Every time we do something, we need to increment k. Now I could put increment k after this and increment k after this, but if you put one at the end, it's going to get run every time anyway. Um, we need two more while loops for the two other cases. And what the two other cases are is like, so we've got these two values. Let's say we're comparing these four. And, well, sorry, these two against these two. And we say, well, 54 is smaller than 93. So we'll take 54 out. Then we move on. Uh, then we say, well, sorry, actually, that wouldn't be the case because the 26 would already be in the first slot because that would have already been sorted beforehand. That's, that's how it works. Because we've already sorted this two, we know that the first values are going to be smaller than the ones after it. Um, so we're going to say while i is less than the length of left so that here we're checking if it's less than length of left and left of, uh, less j is less than the length of the right but what if we what if this is true but this is false cuz we need both to do this check but this we need to have a check for if it's only this one and a separate check for if it's only this one so if we still have values on the left but we've got none left on the right what do we do we still got spare values on the left well we just need to say that numbers oops numbers k is equal to left i and then we need uh, i increment and k increment so that like say we've got like two values left on the left and none on the right we just want to add the ones on the left so we go and add the one on the left and we add the next one because we've incremented it and then we need the same for uh, j. So while j is less than length of right, we want numbers k to be equal to right j. So obviously if we've uh, still got characters on the right but none on the left, it'll run this one instead so that it'll just add the remaining characters from the right to the list because there's nothing else to sort. The uh, ones in the i list have already been sorted. Uh, so we need to increment j and k. And then at the end, you can always uh, print merging numbers so that um, we can see, make sure that's out of the loop, uh, so that we can see which characters we are currently merging together. So uh, merging and then the current list that we're actually doing. And let's just see if this works. And then I'll run over it again. What is the problem here? Uh -huh. I forgot to put a capital here. Sorry. Hmm. What did I do wrong here? We need to uh, increment J here. I forgot to do that. It doesn't know to carry on. Basically, it's going to get like stuck uh, if it doesn't increment J. K reference before assignment. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> I accidentally just missed out K here. Let's see. 1, 17, 20, 23, 26, 31, 40, 53, 54, 55, 60. Yep, it works. It has sorted our list. Now, if you read through these prints, which obviously you can just leave out if you want, we're saying, here's our whole list at the start. That's not sorted. We're going to split it. So I'm going to run it again. This is the recursion happening where we keep running it with the new list of numbers. We get down to 1. And we're trying to merge. We run merge on 54. And we got 26. We merge that. And then it merges it. And here we go. We've got 26 and 54. So it's basically taking those two values and put the lower one first. Then it's doing the same with 93 and 17. It's going to split it down to 93 and 17. And then it sorts it. 17 is smaller than 93. Merging. And we've got 4 here and 4 here. 
then we're going to say, um, but before it actually merges with, so here's, this is ready to be merged, but this one isn't. This is like the other half of the list we haven't done yet. So we need to split, split, split. And we're saying 31 is less than 77. Split, 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 split. 44 is less than 55. So it's doing loads of little sorts. And then um, we say, well, this list is now ready to be merged because this is in order. And the other one is in order up here. The 17, 26, 54, 93. So we put it all together and then we do the whole sorting. So um, we say, well, actually, no, this is when it has been merged and done. Um, but then we've got the other half of the list at the end to do. So we run the whole thing again. I don't need to go for every little step. And then right at the end, it's all in order. And you just have to merge and keep merging all the bits together. So we've got 164 up to here, up to here, up to here, up to here. And finally, it's in order right at the end once we've finished. And that is it. Um, I'll go up to the code. I can't really, I can leave the function on the screen. I can zoom in a little bit maybe to get it all on. The only thing that's down here is the merging numbers bit. Uh, but yeah, so quick run over of what it does. Um, we're printing the current list that we are splitting. Um, and then so long as the thing we're splitting has more than one character, so this will run until we've got it down to one, then it'll stop. Um, we want to say, well, the middle is halfway, and we want the left to be all the characters left from the middle. That's what the colon is, left from the middle value and right from the middle value. Makes sense. And then we're going to obviously do the recursion where we call the function from itself to keep cutting it down and splitting. Um, and then we can check every time, well, every time we reset it to zero, all the variables. Just remember ijk, I accidentally had it as like ijj. Um, while i is less than the one for the left and... So as long as they're both true, it'll uh, check the first characters of both. But then if we run out of one, if the if we run out of J or run out of I, then it'll do one of these checks depending on whether we've run out of... So if I is less than the length of the left, but then that's not the case. If we've run out of J's, then it'll run this. And if we've run out of I's, it'll run this. So I hope this all made sense to you. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than the other ones, but it still makes uh, pretty logical sense and it's only taken like well from line 36 line 3 so it's only taken um wait, how many lines 33 from down there it's only taken like 33 lines um you could argue that it's less because this doesn't count whatever and the prints are unnecessary so you can actually have this really compact and it is very good at sorting big lists large lists of data um i will make a video on o notation explaining the uh, efficiency of algorithms but for now uh this is it if you like the Python videos, then obviously drop a like. It would help me know what people want to see. Uh, same with Unity or any videos. I know my most popular ones are shader videos, so I'm going to keep making those. And as Unity releases new updates on shader graph, it'll help like so that I can add vertex shaders when, when we get to do that. Eventually, it'll be pretty cool, uh, hopefully in the next update. But anyway, yeah, uh, we have a Discord channel, if you haven't joined already, in the description, which uh, where people discuss uh, all nerdy coding stuff. Uh, we're getting quite a few members now um, we have different channels for like Unity, web languages, Python, C Sharp, whatever um, and this is obviously completely up to uh, you to join but I would highly recommend it if you want to have a chat about this kind of thing and obviously subscribing to the YouTube channel would also help a lot and um, just any video suggestions just leave them in the comments please uh, If it, when it comes to shaders as well if you want any of those videos Please comment what kind of shaders you want me to make because I kind of need like ideas of what people want. Uh, otherwise, I'll just keep making random things. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. So thanks for watching and goodbye.